My proposal covers the development of a new three-pronged model for DNA synthesis screening protocol. The gene synthesis industry has grown rapidly over the past few centuries, which has removed many cost-prohibitive barriers to experimentation in the field. This has enabled significant progress in medical research, but also carved a quicker pathway to bioterrorism. Bad actors may simultaneously obtain and use gene sequences to engineer severely harmful pathogens or toxins to inflict harm. To account for this danger, many gene synthesis companies use screening procedures to make sure their customer is well-intentioned and safe, and make sure their sequence product is reasonably safe via homology or match-based sequence screening. If companies fail to effectively screen and end up passing powerful, dangerous sequences on to bad actors, the damages could be catastrophic, potentially leading to the release of severe human-engineered disease, which could lead to pandemics. The acceleration of global tensions and conflicts and severe economic decline, with impact estimations reaching tens of billions of dollars per 100,000 people exposed to the biological weapon. No country mandates that companies screen at all. However, a majority of the industry is wrapped up in the International Gene Synthesis Consortium, which mandates that its members follow a harmonized protocol. However, this protocol maintains outdated sequence screening techniques, fails to properly evaluate customer risk and context, and maintains insufficient customer protocols. Other protocol recommendations in the industry fall short similarly. Furthermore, only 80% of the industry is tied to the IGSC. The remaining 20% of companies are not mandated to screen, and small companies are increasingly abandoning screening techniques to cut costs. All of these failures heighten risks of bad actors accessing dangerous sequences and launching disastrous acts of bioterrorism. My proposal will aim to end all of them. My proposal consists of three mandates mandating function based screening technology, customer risk ratings, and a third party database for customer screening. The basic elements of standard protocols will be retained, but these updates are imperative. Main existing protocols used by organizations like the IGSC involve a match-based sequence screening system. These systems regularly have false alarms and cannot effectively respond to de novo sequences that will soon be generated by tech models like DeepMind's AlphaFold. Thus, a mandate for an updated function-based approach, likely through a technology that can adapt to Nova sequences, remove false alarms, and is free all while eradicating info hazards is optimal. Secure DNA currently meets all of these needs. Currently, procedures for customer screening are also highly imprecise, making them vulnerable to customer deception. After consulting a professional in the anti-money laundering domain for transferability of approach, I determined that the AML's risk rating system will provide much higher clarity. This mandate integrates the Know Your Customer and Customer Identification Program frameworks, which will enable companies to validate customer identity fully, check adverse media to identify customer reputation, and check for consistency of intended use of the sequences with the activities of the customer, using these details to form a low to very high risk rating. Finally, by collecting and creating a shared database of customer information through a third party with strict confidentiality safeguards, Companies can quickly and more effectively identify malicious actors by screening against the node database. Bad actors would be no longer be able to venue shop or order from multiple companies in hopes of finding one with loose protocol, and they would also no longer be able to purchase sub-threshold sequences and combine them to engineer a biological weapon due to shared re recorded purchase history. Small companies would also be able to screen against the database, facilitating this component of screening for them. Overall, these mandates should encourage small companies to adopt screening protocols and eliminate the holes in existing recommended protocols with reasonably high confidence level. To implement these standards and further incentivize small companies, governments can consider potentially offering tax reductions to screen companies, withdraw funding from companies that fail to screen, and partially subsidizing screening to make up for the deceleration of medical progress in these companies. For an overall timeline of projections, it is expected that existing organizations in recent projects like the Common Mechanism, which seeks to standardize screening procedure, can adopt these recommendations by 2025 or even earlier. By 2027, governments of leading gene synthesis countries like the United States should begin implementing the above incentive structures. By 2028, an industry-wide commitment to adopting a standardized screening procedure, likely the Common Mechanism, should be secured. Finally, by 2030, said leading governments should be well positioned to mandate screening and pressure other countries to do the same via business restrictions. This timeline is highly ambitious, but reflects recent calls for security against bioterrorism. My current confidence level in this timeline hovers around plausible. 
Next steps include contacting professionals for review of this pr proposal and potential revisions, which will likely be completed by spring of next year. I then hope to release a report based on professional input by the end of that summer. Ideally, immediately after, I can send the report over to the Common Mechanism, IGSC, and other organizations enforcing protocol for implementation. Overall, the protocols of the past failed to adequately respond to the risks of today. My proposal aims to eliminate the holes in commonly used protocols so bad actors may be kept from accessing high power sequences for malicious use, in addition to recommending incentive structures to put these recommendations or mandates in place. Again, it just takes one slip up in the screening system to potentially cause catastrophe.